Good morning, grade eights, and welcome to another lesson. My name is uh, Ahmed Suleiman. Welcome to another installment on data handling. Right, you see that I'm taking you gradually through the whole process of data handling. And currently, we're busy discussing how to present data. So whenever we spoke about the, the, the bar graph, the pictogram, the histogram, and now today, we're going to look at the pie chart. Not pie in Pythagoras as 22 over 7, or that pie you eat. No, we're talking about a pie graph, which maybe it looks like a, a pizza. You know, it's circular and it is round. So that is our discussion today, as well as something new, a scatter plot. So those are our two graphs today, the pie chart and the scatter plot. So are you ready? Let's start. Right. So we, like I said, we continue our discussion on different types of graphs. Right. So we're going to look at the pie chart, and we're going to look at the scatter plot. Right. Let's start with a pie chart. What is a pie chart? A pie chart is a circular diagram. So it must be round like a circle. And that makes it so different. I'm sure in the newspapers, I'm sure you saw all these circles with different colors and different sectors. I'm sure you saw that. Right. Now the whole circle stands for the whole amount of data being dealt with. So when you draw a pie chart, people, the entire area of the circle must be used. You can't just use one half of it or one quarter of it. You must use the whole area of the circle. So please bear that in mind. Each slice stands for a part of the data. Right represents the size of that part of the data. You will see with our example later on. So when you have your circle, think of a, of a pie, or a pizza rather, and you have these little sectors you cut out in the pizza. So each one, sometimes we use different colors, some, and we also give them names. So each of those sectors will represent a certain part of the data. A pie chart is particularly suitable if you want to illustrate the whole of some data is divided up into different parts and what portion of the whole each part represents. And here the focus is on the word whole. So to give you a, a whole idea at once. So if you, look, if you look at your circle at once, you must get, wow, immediately, the, the idea or the picture. And it's not like you see part of it, you see the whole thing. So that is very important. Right. We can write this portion as a fraction. Very important. We can write it as a fraction, or we can use a decimal fraction, or we can use percentages. So that's how we can present them. We can use fractions, common fractions, decimal fraction, or a percentage. So that is important information. Right. When we draw a pie chart, now very important, guys, we need to learn how to draw a pie chart. So this might be ideal if you perhaps have a protractor with you, a pencil, a ruler, and a compass, and perhaps you can do it with me. That might be a good idea, so I'm sure your teacher told you to have your compass with you, your protractor, a ruler, and a sharp pencil. So let's go through it step by step. The first step is you must draw a circle with center O with a pair of compasses. So I'm going to walk over to my table to show you exactly how it must be done. Right, hello guys. So, you need a compass, right? A compass. And remember, you need a protractor, right? Remember that? Compass and a protractor. And of course, 
a ruler, or you can use a set square to draw a line, and let's start. So let's first start with a circle. Always draw your circle as big as possible, right? As big as possible, right? Don't fight with a compass, right? As big as possible. I'll try and make mine as clear as possible so that you can see what am I trying to do. Now remember, it's a circle with center. Oh, right, guys. A circle with center. So, so that's what you must first do. Draw a circle. I hope you can see mine very clearly. With center. Oh, so that is your very first step. Right. So let me go back to the board. And let's, so that is, so guys, so that is, that is step number one. Right. Let's go to step number two. Draw a radius OB as a starting line for measuring angles. Right. Okay. Draw a radius OB as a starting line for measuring angles. So let me go over and do that. So you have a pencil and your ruler. Right. And you must draw a line. Now take note, what am I doing? From the center of the circle, you draw a line OB. Can you see it, guys? Right? Let me make it clear enough. Right. Line OB. I hope you, you can see that. Right. So there is my line OB. Very important that we must do that to have a starting point because your sectors must start somewhere where we start drawing it. So are we okay with step number one? Remember, you must draw the circle with center zero, and then you must draw your radius OB. Are we clear with that? Remember, you can use any radius, guys. The bigger the circle, the better. So don't, so don't draw those eeny, mini miny circles. Make it clear and make it uh, big. Right, let me go back to the board. Right. So step number three, use a protractor to draw the angle of each sector at the center of the circle. Right, so now you're going to use your protractor, right, to measure. Of course, you are going to do some calculations. I'll show you later on. You're going to work out certain angles, and then I'll show you how to measure. Remember now, I'm just taking you through the different steps. So let me go back to the board and show you what do I mean. Right, so the idea is to take your protractor, right, and you put it, see the center of the protractor, guys, the center here, can you see it? Where my finger is? That center must go on the center of the circle, right? And everything must be in line, right? And then you measure your angles in that direction, or we call it anti-clockwise, in that direction. Now, once you have your size of your angles, you will measure. Let's say the first angle was maybe 50 degrees. Then you will count 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 degrees. Make your mark. Right, take your ruler and join the center with that mark. And there you already have your first sector. Uh, are we clear with that, guys? Is it clear? Now, if you go to the next one, take note again, your protractor, again, the center here, and there's a line here. Center on center, line on line. And you go to the next line now. Let's maybe call this C, right? And on line OC, you do exactly the same. Please, guys, you need to be very accurate, right? And let's say this angle was maybe 90 degrees. So here you say, again, anti-clockwise. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 degrees. Can we see, guys? Right, there is my 90, and there's my mark. Take your ruler, 
and then do exactly the same. Right. And this is the other sector. And that is how you will go until you've measured all your angles. And then you can start labeling and so on. All right, are we clear on that? Let me go back to the board. Right. Step number four. Measure the second angle from a radius OC, which I've just shown you now. Right. So we already done the next step. I showed you how to do OC. Then measure the, the next angle from the new line, and etc., etc. So I've already done two steps with you now. So I hope you are okay with that. Then, of course, step number five, label each slice carefully. Be careful, you need to name them or label them. I, if it's difficult to fit the full name of each group on each slice, label each with a letter and use a key to say exactly what they stand for. Let me go back to the table and show you exactly what do I mean. Right, so look here. Right, so this is one sector here, so you can label it. So maybe you can label it, maybe say, let's we talk about the color of people's eyes, then maybe this will be blue, right? And this will be brown, perhaps. Right. And that is how you need to label them. Or if you maybe have another one here, which is maybe very small. See, this one is very small. You can label it. You can call it maybe X. Because it's very small, you can't write in it. So name it X. And on the side, you will have your key. This will be your key. And here, your key will indicate, like X, might be the color green. And then... Whoever is going to read your, your graph will know, oh, X stands for green. And then they will be able to interpret and understand your graph. Are we okay with that? Right. Let's go back to the board. Don't forget, like any other graph, you must give your graph a title. Give it a name. Like I spoke about color of your eyes, so the title will be written color of eyes. Maybe it's, uh, it's learners in your class. So don't forget, guys, very important. Are we okay with that? Right. And it will take us to the next page. Right. Now. Now I'm going to show you now how to calculate those angles which I spoke about, you know, how do we go about? Oh, by the way, I hope that you've followed me, and I hope that while I was doing my little circle, that you've done it with me, so you can also be busy, not only sitting there and listen to me, but to be actively busy doing your own circle, measuring your own angles, draw your own radius, and name your sectors. So it's good, guys, to, to practice, isn't it? Right. Now, you must look at the given data. Very important. You must first get look at the data that is given to you, obviously. Then you must decide what the whole, very important, or the total amount shown on the pie graph. Example, if I deal with time in one day, then my whole will be... 24 hours, of course. There's only 24 hours in a day if you live on planet Earth, isn't it? 24 hours. If you live on the moon, then of course your day is much shorter. But on planet Earth, one day is 24 hours. So that will be your whole. I hope that that uh, idea of whole is clear. Right. Find out how many different parts or sectors there's going to be. Right, remember those little slices of your, of your pizza, of your pie, the slices? You must know how many do you need. Right. 
Thirdly, calculate the angle at the center of the circle for each sector. Right. Do this by dividing it by 3. Divide 360 by the whole. Divide your 360 by the whole. Right. Now, I know for now it might not make any sense, but once I've shown you the example, it will make sense. Let's look at this 24 hours. Right, if I look at the 24 hours, right, remember that is your whole. Right, you agree with me? 24 hours is your whole. So, which of course is 360 degrees. You agree with me? Because a circle, one revolution, is how many degrees, guys? 360 degrees. Remember, a half circle is 180 so a complete revolution or right around is 360, right? So 24 hours, which is your whole, will be 360 degrees. So one hour, for instance, is it still a whole? No, it's part of the whole. Remember, one hour is part of the whole. Now, how many degrees do you think will that be? Think, guys. Think, think, think. If 24 hours is 360 degrees, how many? Okay. 20, uh, half of 24 is 12. So 12 hours will be a half of 360. Am I correct? So 12 hours will be 180. So it will be less or smaller. So how do we get 180? All right. So it is... Remember, 12 hours is a half of 24. So a half of 360 is 180. And what does it mean? It means 360 divided by 2. Am I correct, guys? Right. Or 360 divided by a half, which is 12. So for one hour, we must take 360 degrees and divide by 24. Right. And that should give us, I'm sorry, that is hours, right? And if our math is correct, I think it is 15 degrees. Right, just double check with me. 360 divided by 24, right? And that should give us 15 degrees. So that is how you're going to go about calculating your degrees. Right, so let's see. Right. Let's look at the activity which you must do now. Right, you are required to draw a pie chart showing how much time a learner spent on different activities in a day. Aha, one day. Remember how many hours? One day. What angle will you need to measure to represent three hours? Okay. Remember I said to you early on, 24 hours is a whole is 360 degrees. Right. So it is actually 360 divided by one whole, isn't it? Then I said a half a day is a half, 12 hours, so 360 divided by 2, etc. You get the idea. Now I want you to do, to do, do exactly the same. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to try this one. Do exactly what I've done before. Are you ready, guys? Starting now.
Right, welcome back, guys. I hope you could do the, the little sum or the mathematics. Let's see. Right. Remember, 24 hours, right, was your hole, right? And that was how many degrees? 360 degrees. Remember now. Remember I said maybe 12 hours, for instance, is a half of the whole, which was 180. Am I correct? So we divide. So therefore, three hours, right, is definitely not a whole or a half. Well, wha what fraction is 3 of 24? You understand? You get the idea. Right. It's 24 divided by 3 is 8, isn't it? So here, you need to divide 360 by... Right. And how much do we get? 120. Is that correct? Yeah. Right. Please double check with me. Is it correct? Right. Yeah, it looks correct. Right. So I'm sure you guys could have done it, and I'm sure you are fine with it. All right. Okay. Good. Right. Let's look at another activity. The eye of colors of a random sample of 120 learners. So that should be your whole, isn't it? Who took part in the 2009 census school were as follows. You must draw a pie chart to display this data. So there's the data given. Right? So blue eyes... Two learners, right. Brown eyes, 104 learners. Green eyes, four learners. And of course, any other color, if that is possible, 10. So they are in total 120. So in other words, guys, your whole is 120. Now you must do a pie chart. So therefore, you need to do the calculations. So let's see. All right, let's look at the solution. I need to take you through this. If you look at blue, then there's a frequency of 2 out of the 20. Right. So therefore, it is 2 times 3, which is 6 degrees. Is it not clear where the 3 is coming from, guys? Where is the 3? It is... 360 divided by 120. Yes, you're right. It is a 360 divided by the 120, which is 3. Right, which is 3. You, you see, so therefore, 3 times 2 is 6. So there you are. 3 times 1 of 4 is 312. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times 10 is 30. And 3 times 120 is 360. Right. So there you are. There's your calculations. It's not clear now. 360 divided by 120 gives you 3. Then, remember what I told you? You need to draw your circle, any radius. You choose your center. You draw your... Well, it all depends which one you want to draw first. If you want to do blue first, then you need to draw your radius, remember? Your radius, right? And then your protractor, and you measure six degrees first. So this angle here will be six degrees, right? Then you can do maybe the other, which is 30. You can do it in any like this, this one here is 30. Look, you can do any one first. It doesn't matter. In any order. And you'll notice that the biggest answer was the brown, which was 312. Can you see here? And the brown is the biggest part. Can you see here? The brown is the biggest part, which is the biggest angle. Right. I hope you guys could do it and you did follow my argument. Right. Right, so let's go to the other type of graph, namely scatter plots. 
Now, maybe I told you that today we're going to discuss pie charts and scatter plots. So what is a scatter plot? It is used to display two sets of data in order to find a relationship between them. So we look at two sets of data. We look at two sets of data, and we're going to compare them. Right, that's why we win. So each axis presents a different variable. We plot values of one quantity against the corresponding values of another quantity. A scatter plot shows a trend. By that I mean it shows a certain way or a certain idea. And it, it makes sense. You will see with the example. Example. Joe has a job selling ice cream. When will he sell the most ice cream? Right. So there's your question. Joe is selling ice cream. When will he sell the most ice cream? So there's a question posed. A question was asked, and now you must solve the problem. Joe says that you will sell the most ice cream on a hot day. So, so what, do you think it is true? Right. And less ice cream on a cooler day. So that is what he says. Now we need to prove whether he's right or wrong, isn't it? So let's see. He thinks he will hardly sell any ice cream on a very cold day. Right. Joe calls this common sense. <laughs> I suppose when it's cold, then you don't feel like ice cream. You rather feel like hot chocolate, isn't it? Or maybe Milo or something hot. Right. In math, it is called a correlation. Ah, there's a new word for you. Right. A correlation. Now, let's see. What do I mean by that? It, makes, it must make sense, or correlation. There is John's graph. You see here we have temperature on the x-axis, right? Because temperature can't really change, so we normally put on the x-axis. And then here we have the number of the, the, the ice cream sold. Number of ice cream sold. And that is what John has done. And so he done his scatter plot from his, uh, his research. And you'll notice that this graph lies in that direction. And we say it is in a positive direction. Or we say a positive correlation. Because it makes sense. So by positive we mean as the temperature increase, as the temperature increase, the sales of the ice cream also increase. As the temperature increase, the sales also increase. So that is common sense. So there you are, a positive correlation. As the one increase, the other one also increase. So it's a positive correlation. And this line we call the line of best fit. But you'll learn more about that next year. Right. Let's look at another example. If you look at this graph, if I can draw a line in the middle here more or less, it seems like it's a graph with a negative gradient. negative gradient because the graph lies in that direction so it's a negative gradient it seems like here the two are exactly in opposite as the one increase the other one decrease so they work exactly opposite like days of the month right and sales Maybe in a shoe shop, that the more days we have, the less sales are there. So the longer the month, the less shoes has been sold in the shop. So it's an, a negative correlation. So it's a negative correlation. In other words, as the one increase, the other one decrease. Right. Then... If you look at the third example, where there's no correlation, 
right? You will notice that the dots are all over. Can you see, guys? I cannot draw a, a, a line through it. Can you see? There's, there's, so there's no, no line of best fit. They are just all over. That means there's no correlation. For instance, the number of sales, the, the number of shoes, or the number of clothing I'm selling got nothing to do with the temperature. Got nothing. So temperature does not influence the, the, the amount of shoes I'm selling. So there's no correlation. Right, so remember now, so there's three types now. There's positive correlation, means a graph going in that direction. That means as the one increase, the other one also increase. Then we get negative correlation in that direction, meaning as the one increase, the other one decrease. Or if the one decrease, the other one increase. Negative correlation. Or lastly, no correlation whatsoever, because I cannot draw a line through any of them. All right. Let's look at the homework activities now. Right. So for homework, I need you to look at the following one. 90% 90 90 of people were asked which month they were born. So 90 people were asked in which month were they born. Here are the results from January right up to December. From January right up to December. Right. Now you need to work out the angle for each one, right? So that's your first step. Work out the angle for each one. Please remember that. Then, right. And so you must complete the table and draw a pie chart. Right, let's look at the second example for homework. There's your second example for homework. A group of 14 learners measure their heights and foot sizes and tabulate their results. So it is their height and their foot sizes, right? And they put their values in a table. Now you must copy this table and draw a scatter plot, right? Remember now, you must do a scatter plot now. The first one was a pie chart. This is a scatter plot to see whether foot sizes increase with height. Do you think the taller you are, the longer your feet will be? Do you think there's a correlation? Or maybe it's a positive correlation? Is it negative? Or is there no correlation? You get the idea, guys? But your graph will tell you that. So there's your values, right? And there's your, there's your table, remember? Foot sizes there, heights here, and then you're going to plot. I can do maybe one example with you. For instance, foot size is 27. So foot size is 27. So it's there, 27, and the height is 174. 174 is roughly there, right? So where do they meet? So the two points meet there, right? So that will be the, the dot for the first one. Is it clear, guys? And that's how you must do the rest of them. I'm sure you'll be able to do that, right? Then there's a third one. You must study the table showing the differences in the access to goods and services between the learners in the 2009 census. Right. Study the table and look at the differences in the access to goods and services. Right. You must draw a compound bar graph to show the percentage of learners who got access to goods and services in 2001. So you must do a double bar graph. Is it clear, guys? A double bar graph, and there are your values. Right. You must draw a compound graph, right? And using telephone, running water, television, and radio. Right, so there's your three examples for homework. Please do them, do them perfectly, be neat and tidy, and practice makes 
Perfect. Don't forget, guys. And I hope you're going to have a nice day. And take care. And see you next time. Bye-bye.